Hi, congratulations on your new RV. We're really excited for you. Please make sure before you're signing that you bring the following items with you. If you are a cash buyer, please make sure that you bring a cashier's check, no personal checks at time of signing, or you may bring actual cash. If you're a finance customer, please make sure that you bring proof of insurance listing your specific lien holder. If you need that information, please call us ahead of time. Also, make sure that you bring all valid driver's license of all persons that will be listed on the title. If you have a trade that you're trading in with us, please make sure that you bring your 10 day payoff as well as your title and all persons who will be listed on the title of that trade. Um, arrive 30 minutes early before your appointment time so we can properly inspect your unit and also make sure that you have the fridge on and running prior to arrival. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 810-686-0710. Thanks so much, have a great day. Hello, this is Mike at Tradewinds RV Center. Here to congratulate you on the purchase of your Keystone Superlight 260 FL travel trailer. I'm here to walk you around the unit, show you how to get the best out of your camping experience. Let's talk about arriving at the campsite. First thing you want to do is pay attention to where your water and electricity hookups are so you can park accordingly. At the front of the unit is your city water connect and your potable water on your driver's side. And then all the way to the back to the rear is your electricity. So park accordingly. Looks like you want to make sure that you have an extra long water hose. So first thing, after you've camped, parked, you're going to want to level your unit. At the front of the unit, you do have a power tongue jack with a docking light and leveler to bring your unit up or down. You can simply put a level inside your doorway or toward the middle of the unit to tell when your unit's level. And there's also a bubble on the top here. Bring our unit down, bring our unit down, and the bubble's gonna move. Should you not have power, underneath here is a manual override with a hand jack hand crank that will bring your power tongue jack up and down. Speaking of power, arriving at the campsite, check your batteries, make sure you got a good connection. We've got our unit level. Next thing you want to do is stabilize our unit. All four corners of your unit has the stabilizing jacks. Simply hook up this three-quarter inch socket. To the right is down, to the left is up. Bring these down until just taut. Now I highly recommend jack pads. That's gonna uh, distribute the weight better. It's gonna protect the bottom of your stabilizing jacks from any hot tar or dirt or anything that may be on the ground. So I recommend picking up some stabilizing jacks from our store. We do have a 10% off coupon for anything in our store. You do have four of those, one on every corner. Remember, this is a three quarter inch socket so you can just put a socket driver on there and impact gun or a power drill and bring these down in just a matter of seconds. Now once you brought all four down, go all the way around and check and make sure that you haven't unleveled some of the other ones. So we've got our unit level, we've got our unit stable, now we're going to hook up our water and electricity. We'll do electricity first. At the back of your unit, on the off camp side, conveniently stored inside is your power plug, 30 amp power plug. Now in your convenience pack, should you need to hook up to 110, you do have this 110 amperage reducer. Simply snap it on there and plug into 110. Um, don't know how many AC units you have on this unit, but run one AC should be fine. Got our power hooked up. Next thing we're going to hook up is our water. A couple different ways to hook up your water. You have potable water and you have city water. First thing to take note of is the water pressure regulator. You don't know what the park's water pressure is set at, so you want to use this water pressure regulator to reduce the pressure to 40, 50, 40 to 50 PSI, thus protecting your lines inside your unit. Hook this on the end of your hose, hooked up to the city water connect. Don't turn your water on yet. You're going to come around here to your hot water heater. The first thing you want to do is make sure your tank is plugged. 
You may have removed this from the last time you were camping, drain your hot water heater. So simply put that in, tighten it in, and you know your drain is plugged. Once your drain is plugged, turn on your water. Put your water's on for a few minutes. You're gonna come up here to this pressure release valve. That's gonna let air out, and then some water. Once water's coming out of this little area here, you know that you've got water into your hot water tank and your hot water tank can be lit from indoors. Should you be using potable water, right next to your city water connect, is your potable water tank. Fill that again, burp the lines in your hot water heater to uh, make sure it's full. And you can turn on your hot water heater using potable water as well. Just remember when using potable water is when you want to use a Water pump, don't use the water pump if you hooked up to City Water Connect. Got our water hooked up. We've got our electricity hooked up. Now we're gonna deploy our slides. Before going inside, I'm gonna walk around the unit, show you a few things. On your propane tanks, you do have a regulator. Simply point this towards the tank that you wish to be using. Of course, your batteries. Storage, pass through storage here. Coming around to your campsite. You have this hose here for your spray port, or you can put this on it. Just use it as a regular sink. No drain on this sink. And then your little outdoor grill. You have to hand light this yourself. Here's your connection for your Quick Connect LP, which is right there, and also low water drains that we'll talk about later. Next to your outdoor grill, you have your heat release for your furnace. That will get pretty warm, stay away from that. Access to the back of your fridge. Outdoor speakers. Coming around to the back of the unit, you have some more storage here. Individual lights to shut off. And a cover for your spare tire. It covers everything on the outside. These are just more storage inside your slides. And lastly, a black tank flush, which we'll talk about when emptying our sewers. Let's go inside and look at a few things. Coming inside the unit, just to the right of the door, as with every unit right by the doorway, is gonna be a fire extinguisher. To the left of the doorway as you enter, is a control panel. Turn on porch lights, flood lights, and your ceiling lights. Now let's, let's extend your slide. That's your awning extension. One thing I do want to note on your awning is when you bring it out, bring it out until your flap falls down to 90 degrees. You don't want to bring it down any further than that. Now we're going to come down these two panels here and we're gonna open the right one. Got a couple slides on here, your bedroom slide and your living room slide before we deploy those. Let's talk about your water pumps. This is to check your t all of your levels. This is your water pump to turn on when using potable water. If you're hooked up to gas, you'll turn on your water heater here. If you're plugged into electricity, you'll light it from here. Living room slide, bedroom slide. Let's start with the living room one. Simply hit the out button, and out it will slide. Now make sure when you park, you park accordingly so you don't have anything obstructing the slide or anything touching it. You don't want any branches or anything really touching any part of your unit. Slide only takes a matter of seconds to go out. You hear that noise, you're fine, it's not hurting anything. Now I'll go ahead and deploy the bedroom slide, which you can see going out from here. I'm gonna run that all the way out. I've closed that back up. As you know, that table will fold down. Set it on these lips here and use your back cushions. You can turn this area into a big bed. I'm sure you know 
This will jackknife down into a bed. Go on the back to set it back up. You have individual lighting all the way through. Talk about your sound system. Got a Genesis stereo in here. AM, FM, CD, DVD player, MP3 player, auxiliary and headphones. This has got a little bit of everything. DVD. And your TV. Speaking of your TV. At the back, next to your plug where your cable hooks in. See this little button. Make sure when you get to the part before you scan for channels, press that button in. That's going to be a digital channel booster. You pick up 20 to 30 channels. Your remotes. So come over here to your stove. Simply turn your stove to light. Hit your spark button. If your gas is on, you'll have like you have power here. You have a light and a fan and your self-explanatory microwave. Let's explain your fridge. At the top of your fridge, automatic fridge, you turn it on. Right now it is set to auto. When it's pushed in, you set to auto, which means when you're plugged into electricity, it's running off electricity. As soon as you unplug it, it'll automatically go to gas. Or release this button, and now it's strictly on gas. Release this button, and it's off. Up above that, your air conditioning. Coming down the hallway to your right, it's your thermostat that will uh, run your heat and air to set a desired temperature. To the left, coming down the hallway at the bottom, this little white thing here is your carbon monoxide detector. This is a 12 volt carbon monoxide detector. I emphasize that because it's constantly running off your battery. So if you're going to be gone for the day, or if you're dry camping and you're not plugged in somewhere, know that this is constantly running your battery down. So disconnect your battery if you're going to be gone for the day, otherwise this will run it down to nothing. To the right of that is your access panel for your fuse box and breaker box. It looks like you have mostly 15s in there. Highly recommend having a handful of those with you when you go camping. Also coming down the hallway in the ceiling is your smoke alarm or individual lighting. Come into your big bedroom here. You have a 110 here. Left on this to open up your huge closet. Make sure that's closed during travel. Individual lighting up there. You have another individual smoke alarm here in the bedroom. Another 110 on the other side of the bed. Go back down the hallway and step into the bathroom. One thing I do want to mention in the bathroom. You have a fan that will turn on here. Or you can turn it on and off here. And raise and lower here. Fan off, lights on. In your bathroom you also have a 110 with GFI protection. That about covers all the basics on the inside. You do want to note, just over your dinette here, you do have an antenna. Power on and off. Take it to the right to bring it up, left to bring it down. Have that up when you scan your channels. Alright, so we're getting ready to leave the park now. We've closed up our slides. Batten down the hatches indoors. Make sure everything is safe for travel. And we pull to the front of the park. In the front of the park is their dump station. There's your dump line. In your convenience bag is the sewage hose. Simply hook the sewage hose up here to the end and pull your black tank. Once you've pulled your black tank, I'm gonna give it a few minutes. Then we're gonna use your water pressure regulator again and you come to this sewer tank flush. You're going to hook up your water pressure regulator and let that run for about five minutes with a hose in it. What that's going to do is it's going to 
spray out your black tank, get all that nastiness out of there. Once you have that done, you're gonna shut off your water, come back over, close that black tank, and then in between your tires is a handle for your gray tank. Pull that gray tank, that's gonna clean out your, your uh, shower and sink water, which is gonna be cleaner. And it's gonna wash your hose out for you. So you have your hose washed out, hose up all of your tanks, come to the back and store your sewage hose in your bumper. Nice, clean, sanitary place to keep it. Now you can do this before you leave the campsite or afterwards. It's a dump station, but I, I would do it at, at your campsite because it's just water. You're gonna go ahead and burp this again, make sure no air is in the lines, and then you're gonna release this plug. All your hot water from your tanks are gonna come out, from your hot water tank. And then you're gonna come to the front of the unit here, just below your city water connects, and you're gonna turn that to open it up and let your fresh water out. You also have one more place to release fresh water from your water tanks. Come over to your campsite. Just under here you also have a couple more. So let all your water out and you're all set to go home. Thanks again for your purchase. We appreciate it, your business. We hope you enjoy your camper for many years to come. Happy camping.